Hello, I'm Harville Hendricks. I'm Helen LaKelly Hunt. And we're partners in life and work. And one of our works is the co-creation of a process that we call Safe Conversations. And we want to talk about that today with a couple. You may not have heard about Safe Conversations until today, and we'll just briefly say what it is. Safe Conversations is a new way to talk in which you talk without criticizing, you listen without judging, so you can connect beyond your differences. And that's what we want to see today and want to share with you that you might want to use uh, during this time of confinement and quarantine, that when the stresses of your relationship may be high. The subject of our session today is how could safe conversations help with uh, the trauma and the and the negative emotions we have at home when we're quarantined um, during, due to the COVID-19 crisis. And we've asked a couple to join us, um, uh, Barry and Ann Compte. And uh, hey, Ann, Barry, hi. Hi, Ann and Barry. Uh, hi. So hi. we're gonna sort of have a four-way conversation and then they'll do a demo for you. but. Uh, Barry and Anne, who would like to go first? Just introduce yourselves, maybe where were you born or what was growing up like, or but mainly your professional status at this time. Well, I'll let Barry start. I grew up in Washington, D.C., born and raised there, reside currently in a suburb of Washington, D.C., been here pretty much all my life, um, became interested in the emergency medical services field around the age of my mid-20s and have now been involved in this field for over three decades, still currently in this field as an EMS division chief in a county called Calvert County in Maryland, suburb of D.C. also. Um, I grew up in a two-parent two uh, family. Both of my parents were working parents, which kind of contributed to um, a little bit of independence of my brother and my sister and myself because even though my mother worked, she was a working mother. Um, she had some other issues, personal issues that made her kind of not available to us in the evenings. And my father worked two jobs, so we never really saw him except on the weekends. But um, yeah, that's probably about the most difficult part of my life that I can think of um, right now, so. And um, I came from a whole different background than Barry because I was born and raised in India, in Mumbai, India. And I was the last child. I was the youngest. I can't say I was spoiled. I think I might talk about that later. But um, Barry and I met almost 10 or 11 years ago. and We live, live in Maryland and I am a Safe Conversations leader and um, I'm also um, do other work and I help people with other services they need. I'm, I'm also a um, licensed therapist. Thank you very much. And uh, talking to you to date, uh, we connected you a with you a couple of times and you were at home, but when we were told the time this would be filmed, uh, Barry, you wanna tell us where you guys are and <laughs> that, <laughs> that everyone, all the rest of us are at home. And in Dallas, you're not allowed to drive and you can get a $500 fine unless it's an emergency. Wow. Anne had to go to your office. Um, and you wanna say why? Well, unfortunately I work for county government and I work in the public safety arena. And as a result of that, even though the county government is technically open, a lot of people are working from home, a lot of our buildings, county buildings, are closed to the public. However, I am one of those deemed kind of essential employees. I, I work in the Emergency Medical Services Division, supporting the volunteer EMTs and paramedics in the field. And we are basically the first line of um, response to uh, many of the 
patients, potential patients in this coronavirus epidemic. So I, I kind of have to be at work every day. Yeah, like at 10 o'clock last night, we found out, yeah, you know, we were all ready to do this at home. And he said, well, I can't, I got to go to work. And I said, well, everyone else is at home. And he said, well, and um, so um, it's just some of the stress that you come home with. Um, because there's stress at work and then uh, being quarantined has its stress. We asked Anne to go first. Um, Y'all have been married 10 years. Um, and every marriage has its ups and downs. How has Safe Conversations um, been helpful? Yeah. Um, thank you for asking that question. I think I feel like our marriage has had a rebirth after Safe Conversations, honestly, because I think from a cultural perspective, um, I was I was married before, and just to give you a little background, my first husband loved India, and he was also American, but he just absolutely wept when he left India when we traveled together, and it was his f first time. So one of the stories I would make up in my head is that my second husband would have a similar experience. So I take him to meet my family in India, and we have a planned this very adventurous trip for him, uh, <laughs> which uh, in Mumbai, we have in, in, in Bombay, which is a city I was born and raised in, there's a lot of traffic there. There are a lot of people there. In addition to vehicles, there are just animals and all of that. Well, we had this wonderful two and a half, three weeks, I thought wonderful, um, adventurous trip, and we come back back and Barry would say, uh, people would ask him, hey Barry, how was India with great excitement? And Barry would do the eye rolling, which we knew that wasn't good for our marriage. And then he would say, it was adventurous, like with that heaviness. And I, in my childhood, what I brought to this relationship was I was abandoned, neglected, um, almost invisible in the family. And I felt very dismissive and he would do that. And there were so many things I would say in terms of come what Harville started off by saying criticism and judgment. I would judge Barry thinking he didn't like my culture. Um, how come he didn't like it? You know, he's American. My first American husband had a great experience. Why wasn't he having a, a great experience? And I actually held, a, held that grudge against him for a year. I really did until I got in and learned about safe conversation and there's the rebirthing part that I sitting with him and learning to slow down and dialogue I was able to cross over to see that he actually worked as you know as a paramedic and most of Barry's uh, PTSD was associated with a lot of rescues on the street he had rescued a lot of people on the street in accident and how triggering it must have been for him to travel to India with all the noise and feeling overwhelmed. And we don't have a line system in India and nobody forms a queue. Everybody just jumps in and it must have been so hard. So I like almost with teared eyes, I said to him, that must have been so hard for you. And you did that for me. Thank you. And when I did that, we came for, we were stuck in our relationship and we we moved we actually came to a very enlightening part in our relationship and just to give you a, a, after that process my mom passed away the following year and barry actually was the first person to get on the plane book the ticket be at the funeral he was the only son-in-law who showed up and then came the question in the cab while we were leaving the funeral how is India, Barry? And I was almost going like this inside my heart. And Barry says, not bad. The second time, I really like it. Mm. Oh. And sounds like, uh, Anne, you're saying that empathy transformed your relationship uh, with Barry and with yourself. That that was really a magnificent thing when you began to experience what it must have been like for him rather than just staying in what you were experiencing because of his experience. Yeah, I, 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 and a lot, I want to add seeking to see what it was like in, in his body or yeah. his world. Like yeah. you, you took time to see what it was like from his point of view, yeah. even though you had a different point of view. And yeah. then, then it, you began to feel empathic yeah. for him. Yeah, completely. I still feel so touched by that experience. And I'm 
in, in such a good place with him from empathy to always ask him, do you want to go to India? Do you want to do, do you want to stay in the hotel? It's okay. I know that this is, so it, it really, for me, I, I think growth happened, not only in our relationship, but with me, myself, I didn't feel dismissed. I didn't feel invisible. I was able to actually see him with the different lenses. Yeah. Yeah. You grew into your own empathy. Yes. That changed him. Um, when you, you told me this story yesterday, um, but somehow telling it again the way you did, I just, I had my tears in my eyes about how touched you must have been. Um, once, I remember yesterday you said, I began to see things from his point of view. And when I made it safe for him to not like India, and I said, oh, okay, from your point of view, India's this and India's that. Then once he felt like you accepted him, he then could see India from your point of view. And if I got that. Yes, you, you, you're getting me. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, when I, we could spend two hours on this because Anne said, Helen, wouldn't it be great if we could talk about safe conversations to heal the racial, no, the geographical divide or the, you know, all the different divide, nationalities. That. Anyway, that's another show. Right. But Barry, would you um, would you uh, share uh, what how safe conversations has helped y'all's marriage? Well, actually, in talking about that same subject, I think uh, what happened for me was that I was sort of diagnosed with PTSD after my initial retirement from my first job as the paramedic, and I was um, very stressed by a lot of things, and I found. India to be very stressing to me. I should tell people that it was like New York City was stressful except twice as bad. And it's just the, the, the people and, and the traffic and everything it was very overwhelming for me. So it was difficult for me to express that to her because I never really had the opportunity to do a lot of you know, expression in my growing up in life. Like I said, I didn't have a, um, a parent who basically greeted me every day and asked me how my day was and was very concerned about you know my emotional well-being and so I, I tend to keep things inside and I guess they came out in little blurps like that like you know it was overwhelming and things like that that I, I used to express about India but um, when, when I when Anne did come to me and take the time and, and talk to me and ask me to express how I felt and we had some really good dialogue about that it was very rewarding for me to know that you know once she cared and two, that I had somebody, a partner that would listen and I could express things to in a way that was just unlike anything I'd had before in my life. So um, that was a very, very important part in our, our marriage, very important change in our marriage at that point. And that's early on in the marriage too. So that was yeah. a good thing. It was earlier on. Yeah. Well, thank you both so much for sharing. It's one thing to talk about safe conversations and it's another thing to practice it uh, because it's the practice of it that's transformational. Just pausing and looking at each other in the eye when you're talking in uh, this age where we're all multitasking. Uh, and so Harville is now going to put the two of you in a dialogue and each of you will just language uh, one thing that you need the other to do if they did this, you would feel so much safer at home during this traumatic time that the, we're all living in. Okay. So uh, would you all switch a little bit so that you can switch your chairs so that you're looking at each other face to face? Okay. Sure. Let's take a, just a second to do that. We talk about before the words connect, put down yourself products and face each other and let your bodies connect because yeah. there's energy between the two of you when you face each other and in this moment two people can make the energy between them safe oh okay so you all are in place yes yes all right um so the first thing uh, we do uh, to make a conversation safe is to make an appointment to have a safe conversation. So which one of you wants to start first? I'll go. Okay, 
So Anne, would you say to Barry, Barry, is now a good time uh, to share with you something that I need in this time of crisis to feel supported and safe? It's now a good time for me to share what I need during this difficult time in crisis. Yes, it is. Okay, so take a moment and just make eye contact and take three to five deep breaths. Because breathing opens the pupils in your eyes and that means to each of you that you're open and available for this conversation. And for those of you viewing, learning about this, Safe Conversations, one person is the sender and the other is the receiver. She will send a message and Barry will just mirror her. Okay, so I wanna give you sentence stems uh, and you sort of finish the sentence. And so the sentence stem is, Barry, um, and first of all, thank you for being available for this. Barry, thank you, first of all, for being available for this. And I, what I need from you during this time of a crisis and um, quarantine, the stress of all that is. What I need from you during this time of crisis and quarantine is that you wouldn't leave me, that you will be there that you would text me because you're at work. I feel so alone. And so Barry, would you now mirror her back and say, if I got that, what you need from me now to feel supported and safe. So if I got that, what you need from me during this time of crisis is for me to be there for you and stay in touch and text you if necessary and just not leave you. Is that good? Yes. And, and is there more about that? And is there more about that? Yes, I, I feel really scared and lonely. So if I got that. So if I got that, you're saying you feel very scared and lonely. Yes. Is there more? Is there more? Yes. And, and I think you said that you wanted him to say the words, I'll be there for you. Yes. And you say that to him again. And, and that you will be there for me. And I would like you to say those words. And I'd like for you to say those words back to me, please. So if I got that. So if I got there, think, I'm sorry, if I got that, do you want me to say to you that I will be there for you? Did I get that? Did I get that? Yes. So thank you for sharing that with me. So thank you for sharing that with me. Thank you for listening, Barry. So now we'll switch and uh, Barry, if you would be the sender and uh, say to Anne from her uh, for the particular kind of stress you have in this time of crisis. So start with an appointment again. There's now a good time for me to share with you what I need from you during this time of stress. Uh, Anne, it's now a good time for you to hear from me what I need from you during this time of stress in our lives? Yes, now is a good time. So again, uh, just take a moment for eye contact and for about three deep breaths. So relaxing the pupils of your eyes so that you're open to each other. So thank you for being available to me and to share what I need. So thank you for being available to me and for sharing what I need from you. You're welcome. You're welcome. So what I need from you during this time of stress for me is? So what I need from you during this time of stress is just to be a good listener to me. Um, when I come home and I'm very tense and stressed, it just allow me to sort of vent and unwind and that try to say, fix whatever may be bothering me the most. So, so, let, me, let, me, so let me see if I got that. Um, what I heard you say, Barry, what you need from me the most during this time of stress in your life is that when you come home, all you want me to do is listen and you will give you space to vent and not try to fix or rescue you. Am I getting that? 
Yes, you are. Is there more about that? Is there more about that? Um, well, sort of. I, I basically have a lot of things going on, and sometimes I may come across as if I'm asking for help, but actually all I'm really doing is just relieving myself of that stress, and I just need somebody to listen to me. So if I got that. So if I got that, you are also um, saying that what you need for me is that there's a lot of things going on. And what you're trying to do, it may seem like you're asking for help, but you really are relieving the stress and you want me to just listen to you. Am I getting this? Am I getting this? Yes, you are. Yeah, is there more about that? Is there more about that? No, that's pretty much it. That's it. Well, thank you for sharing all that with me. Thank you for sharing all that with me, Barry. And thank you for listening. Well, thank you, Anne, for listening to me. I really appreciate it. And I think, given that you all are a couple and are not infected, that you could make some <laughs> physical contact that you may want to. <laughs> thank you. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. That was beautifully done. Beautiful. Um, so I, uh, Harvey and I want to add, there's one other level uh, for you all to do, and I bet you do do this, but give me feedback, but also for the viewers. When um, we basically identify what we need, the next step is making a request. And Harvell uses the term a smart request. Mm -hmm. And smart means it's simple, succinct, mm -hmm. it's repeatable, Me measurable, repeatable, it's measurable, it's like it's concrete. Yeah. It's not, hi, honey, I'm depressed. I don't like our relationship at home and I need more love. Well, I, I just don't feel like you love me. So I want you to love me more. So that's vague and that's confusing. And um, one of the things that Harv and I do is at night before going to bed, uh, we talk to each other in specific ways. And, um, and when you and I, uh, when we talked a little bit to prep for this, uh, I had this vision that if every night before going to bed, what if Barry said to you, hey, Anne, honey, I just want you to know I am stressed, I'm busy, and you are my priority, and I want to be there for you in ways you need me to be there for you. And you can even write out exactly what you want your partner to say before going to bed, and then you go, oh, you know, that it'll, you'll relax. And the same back. Um, Barry, if you could language specifically, what would she say? It's my... Point yeah, sense. and I think there's another piece that, given uh, what uh, both Ann and Barry said about their backgrounds, is that a piece that we did not do in this but could do in a longer one with more time is when they are stressed, what does it trigger from their childhood? And we can imagine they both would, would know that this a stress and the need come from a childhood experience. And that would be another deeper way that you can engage in this process. So let's take a minute now and just hear from Barry and um, Anne about what it was like to do that in this moment. Um, I think for me, what comes up for me right now is the fact that we actually went and saw a therapist because we were having trouble in our marriage in communication. And I remember her prescribing saying, just do it to Barry, just tell her that you won't leave. And it, and he would come home and say, I, I can't do that for you. I just cannot. When I'm upset you, at you and I can't do that. And what, what we didn't have, this is the rebirthing of our relationship. We just didn't have the safe conversation tools to be present and to listen. We were in a very intense power struggle where I would say, I would feel like, why aren't you doing what the therapist told us to do? Just tell me that you won't leave. Like, I don't get it. We've been seeing this therapist for a year now. And we just didn't. And so the part that I really relish with this interaction today is the fact that we, it's empowering. It's uh, the application. I don't need to see a therapist. 
uh, we can do this on our own. We, we consistently, whenever there's a rupture, we know how to go and to use the tools to do it. And so what I appreciate is that I wanted, I yearned for him to say that for years. No. But what was standing in the way was he, I was the unsafe person. No. And that's, when that cleared out, I got out of the way, I got what I wanted. But no. we didn't have the tools. Right. Mm -hmm. And so what this process does, which is what you're saying, it makes you safe enough to be vulnerable so you can connect. And then you can support each other. But if you're not safe, you, it's just almost impossible. You can't really, you can't support a person who feels dangerous to you. And so you have to transition it into safety, which you can do in five minutes um, so that you can then shift into support. So one of the things we, um, we, a term we have in Safe Conversation is sender responsibility. So the viewing um, watching us now knows a Safe Conversation works best when one is the sender and one is the receiver. Right. Well, guess what? Sometimes senders are too wordy and the receiver gets defeated because they can't mirror back because the sender's talking, 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 talking. And we talk about oh, what Anne is doing beautifully, Anne Barry, she's saying very succinctly what she would like. And sometimes it helps to even write it down if you would just do this. Maybe it is a phrase or mm -hmm. maybe it's whatever, but mm -hmm. Anne knows what she needs. And, but the more concrete, I think this was Harville's discovery yeah. one day. You, again, a, a request like, I just, you, you're not making me feel loved. So I yeah. think you don't love me anymore. The, the other person is defeated. They don't know what to do. So it's learning to, number one, ask for what you want. Number two, with sender responsibility. Yeah. That means you say it succinctly in a way that lands on the other person, yeah. the receiver, where they want to do it. And they're willing to do it. And before we is that, run out, is of, that right, Anne and Barry? Yeah. Yes. yes. Uh, and before we run out of time, let's hear what Barry's reaction to doing the process in the moment is. And then, well, the whole the whole process for me, it, I always saw that we were two different people with two different ways of communicating before safe conversations. And what it provided for us both was a sort of a roadmap that we can both follow to make it easier for her to say things that she might have said in an explosive way before, and me to have a way of saying things I might have been afraid to say about before, because we kind of oh. are two different type personalities. So um, it kind of brought us to that road in the center where we both had a way of communicating without it being a yelling or without it being in fear. And, and now we're right in the middle. So we opened up our communications greatly since we, we've both been practicing this. Well, thank you very much for sharing that. Sure. Yeah. And there's a lot more apologies, I think, with safe conversation being part of our life. We have been learned a lot how to apologize. Oh, can I resend it? Oh, that was an ouch, you know? Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you for sharing that. And um, so, Helen, what so else I guess, do we do? I guess we're, we're near the end. Um, we just, uh, the, the mirroring process, um, the sender sends, the mirror mirrors and says, did I get it? And if, if they said, yes, you got it, then say, is there more? Yes. And that's the uh, first step of the mirroring process. And a, the step two is say, well, that makes sense. No. If that's what you're asking for, that makes sense. So Anne and Barry, thank you so much for being with us. And for thank us. you for having us on. And we wish you well yeah. during this time of crisis in which we're all trying to find our way to a new level of being with each other. We are now learning what we say in uh, Safe Conversations is we are all connected and it's taken a virus to help all, the whole mm -hmm. world mm -hmm. actually get that and that our, each, the uh, welfare of one person uh, is um, dependent on the welfare of all and the welfare of all on one of us. So that uh, this is a new time of learning in our history, the truth of our being. And Anne, your vision is like Harvel's. I love that Harville is such a genius at two people connecting, but Harville's vision is the world connecting. He's yeah. been this way the last yeah. 20 years. And you're saying, and countries 
can do it. Like yeah. countries that don't get along, yeah. they can. Yeah. <laughs> countries can learn to like each right. other and work together. And so you know, let's just pray that maybe this time as we do this at home better, and and uh, and Anne, you're taking this to India. Yeah, you know, there are a lot of safe conversation practitioners taking this to many other countries. Maybe it'll spread, and yes. uh, and we will be able to have more peace on Earth. Yes, for sure. Thank you again for having us. This is our new handshake. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, thank you for being with us, and we wish you health and long life, and see you down the path. Mm -hmm.